Hello, hello. Wow, greetings to my wonderful audience. I am going to talk about all my story in short sections. My life. Well, I was the middle. One older brother, one younger brother. One older sister, one younger sister, and then me. Okay, we grew up in the countryside. In the rural areas where there were layers and layers of rice paddies, mountains, forests, river, and fast moving torrential river. And also, wow, we used to run around in the mud and we were the child of a doctor, the only doctor in about nearly 50, maybe 100 villages, small little uh, areas. Yeah, injury will come in. That's a fake. I'm not sure. No, you, you, you cannot. You don't need to remind me. Even if I didn't say something, it's all good. Ah, I'm being recorded. <laughs> this is the best. That's the best. Okay, we we'll continue. That is good. Okay, you come. You join me. Yeah, you sit next to me. Yeah, that's even better. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, yeah. You can. No need to cut. You just come in. You just come in. Okay. Oh, you're gonna do it like that? Yeah, okay. it's even better. Yeah. That's fine. This is the right way, right? Yeah, like yeah. you're talking to him. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell stories to my nephew. I'll act like an old great great grandfather, and he is my little great great grandson. Actually, he's my nephew. Seriously. Yes, seriously. If you want to talk, you have to talk to here. Otherwise, people can't hear you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I think we should get back to a uh, story. Uh, so uh, back to the story, story part. Got it? Okay. So where did I grow up? Do you remember? Uh, okay. You grew up uh, next to the ocean uh, where uh, the caviars uh, are, am I right? Yes, the Caspian Sea. Yeah, the Caspian Sea. Yes, and then from the ocean, we go up, up, up to the mountain. We were like in the slope of the mountain and the ocean. And the most green area, the Four Seasons, is like the... There's a whole mountain range called Alabors. South of it, there are deserts, very dry and very like arid and north of it is the Caspian Sea and in between is like the greenhouse effect so we grew up where there is snow and the snow can come to about half a meter one meter even more okay uh, and also uh, I knew that you grew up there because uh, your brother aka uh, my dad uh, took me that so, yeah oh your dad took you where he told me about it, not take me. Ah, okay. He took you on your mind there. Okay. Yeah, and... Uh, Very funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, we were five. He was the oldest. He was most powerful, your dad. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Even now he's powerful, right? Yeah, even though he took down his left got hurt. What? What? Well, okay. So... How about your grandfather? Uh, you mean Baba Saeed? Baba Saeed is from your mother, from your father's mother's father. That's great grandfather. Okay. How about your grandfather? That means your father's father or uh, my father. Oh, uh, you mean uh, Dr. Ali? Yeah, Dr. Vali. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll say he did a pretty good job about being a doctor, if I say to myself. Uh, so yeah, he was a doctor. He was the doctor of nearly 100 villages. That means he had to be on the horseback. Even if he had high fever, 42 degrees uh, Celsius, he would still have to go in the mountain path, and in the forest, and go far, three hours, five hours, and then cure people. And sometimes they didn't even have money to pay him. So they gave him pheasant some food to eat to bring to us, like birds or uh, other things. So, and then, as soon as he came back, again, somebody knocked at the window. Our doctor, our doctor. Doctor, sir, doctor, we need you. 
So he was 24 hours, 7, all the time going out. And in the morning, 7 a.m. till 11, till 12, at the most till 1 o'clock, he was working with the government uh, clinic. Oh, the clinic was a large building. Look, this side of the clinic was like his, uh, this side of the building was the clinic, and this side was the house, the living. Okay. Uh, so, uh, there is one thing I know for sure. Your uncle would definitely uh, not do that. It's because uh, your uncle was rude. That's one thing I know. It's because uh, my dad, a.k.a. your brother, uh, told me that again. So, you mean he, my brother, who is your father, told you that our uncle was rude? Yeah. Actually, he's correct. Because not rude, poor guy. Anyway, mean. he was a bit mean, yeah, because he was half brother, and he has like maybe my father did a very self-made himself grow up, 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 and did very well, and he couldn't, and mm -hmm. so it was jealousies or something. We forget, we forgive, never think negative. Okay, no need for any. Yeah, good things come. Okay, now about my father then. That is your mm -hmm. grandfather. Okay, he was younger than you. You how old are you now? Seven. He was two years longer, younger than you, five years old, and he was the breadwinner of the whole family. Breadwinner. Yeah, it means he was the one who made money for the family. I thought a uh, breadwinner uh, meant like the person who made uh, like the most food or like uh, gather the most bread. Yeah, the gather no made more money to buy the food. That's called breadwinner. To bring the bread, meaning to bring the whole food. Yeah, exactly. The same, yeah. So your grandfather, when he was far, let me tell you the picture. Imagine the desert of Arizona. And then imagine, you have been there, yeah, near the, near the, the, the what? You have been in a very beautiful place. Where? The Grand? Uh, the Grand Canyon. Okay, you have been there? Uh, another funny thing, uh, I almost got stabbed by a cacti in there, so I almost, I almost, uh, my back almost got straight into a cacti, but then, but then I just went flat. I was like, uh, okay, I don't know if that again. Okay, uh, one cacti or a whole group of cacti? Uh, like, uh, a whole group, yeah, it was one cacti, it was one cacti. Okay. Now, imagine the thorns are rolling. And the wind is coming, and it's the desert, and one old man, 75 years old, on a mule, dun, 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 coming, and a little child is running around. In his hands are bloody, because he's gathering the thorns, hitting into his hand. What? And he's, yeah, that's your grandfather. Why was he doing that? Why was he was I collecting the thorn, just like a fuel for the town. So they would take it to the town and would burn and would make hot water. That was his job. He made money from that, but it wasn't his money because the owner was the old man on top of a mule. He's like the investor. He's like the bourgeoisie. My father, that is your grandfather, bourgeoisie means in luxury. He has everything. He has the asset. He has the money. He had the mule. He, had, he was the boss. And the little child, like your age, lower than your age, bleeding hands, was the one who was working hard, like the laborer. Like from the morning till afternoon, and then when it becomes in fulfilled, they would go back to the town, da -dun -da -dun -da -dun, one or two hours, then come out again in the afternoon, a few times, two or three times a day, until they made the, 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 the mule owner made good money. But my father made a little money, and he took it and gave to his mother, his stepfather, who was actually a drug addict, unfortunately. So that means that he was not able to do any job. He was like, uh, how do you say, he was like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, handicap. Think of him as a handicap. So, not like that. No, your dad, even he was handicapped, he was doing tons of jobs. He was working, your dad has worked very hard all his life. All well, you got to do is uh, stopping uh, from, from the computer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but that's good. That's his thing with you. He's not running around like me. 
Um, okay. Now, your grandfather, back to the story. So he was a thorn gatherer. Mm -hmm. He would oh. gather the thorn as a child laborer. And with a bloody hand, with the running feet and getting tired, and running and putting it in the sack of the mule, and then taking back to town and come out again and to the town and made very little money for his mother, his stepfather, and stepbrother and stepfather. What does that mean? The step means that not from the same father and same mother. So that means that the mother was the same, but the father, his father had died. Uh, so it was another, yeah, yeah. So back again we summarize. That's how you started. There was a great grandfather of yours who died early. Yeah, and then your grandfather was orphan child. I with in the battlefield. Yeah, exactly. Everyone. Exactly. So you look at the camera, look at the eyes of the people, and then like wave to them so that they are happy to see you. Yeah, yeah like this. Yeah, like the <laughs> Exactly. There is a director over there. Exactly. So our 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 uh, interview is very interactive. We are talking to the people. We are talking to the director. We are talking to you, okay, and we are talking to the soul of your grandfather, who is now here with you. And also, uh, who served uh, orange uh, soda to you? Oh, that's a different one. That's my mother's father. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's different. But this one is my father's, your father's father. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay, with my great nephew, Anis. Oh, Nafis. <laughs> You're thinking we, about. We, yeah, we read uh, it again. You are thinking about uh, your other nephew, which is actually a teenager now, kind of recently. Yeah, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, so we have another nephew who is related to you. Huh? How is he related to you? Because uh, uh, we're brothers. Oh, wow. But you came first or he came first? Uh, he came first because obviously he is a teenager now. He's a teenager or a teenager? Or a teenager? He, he's a teenager. How old he's is he? 14. 14? You, you have to be 13 to be a teenager. Oh, he just turned 13. So he just became a teenager. Uh, I mean, uh, no, I can't mean uh, like a few days ago. Okay, a few days ago. Very good. I was not, a, that's what I'll tell you. Okay. Now, about your grandfather again. So, when he grew up, he did every difficult job that exists. Like being porter, carrying big lift of weight. Or being a mason. Or being a shoemaker. Are or pickles? Yeah, 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 no, he was like, or yeah. digging the ground every day, morning to the evening. Digging uh, for like what? Not for gold, I don't know, for maybe building, making the building, construction, okay. maybe passing the brick. So becoming, uh, uh, what I call it, a mason means how, uh, building houses. So anyway, or even sometimes just portering, taking the, the dirt from one place to another place for the people to mix it with the cement. So he did every kind of low quality, hard job. More interestingly, or worse than that, he got every killer disease that existed there, including smallpox, including plague. I mean, in his face, there were signs of the killer diseases. His eyes, his like, mm, like almost a cut face. So he had the most difficult job any child can have. And any teenager can have. So that's how he finally died. No, his life just starting. He was illiterate means that he didn't go to school because he didn't have money, he didn't have a father, nobody took care of him. He took care of many others. Because he would, couldn't go to school, he learned by himself. Okay. When he was older, 20 years old approximately, he became a Baha'i. And he said, oh, I will change my life. So in one year, he studied sixth grade. And he passed the exam, became a, a primary school graduate. 
In one year, in one year he learned three more classes. He finished ninth grade. And in one year he finished the twelfth grade. That means in three years he became a high school graduate. What? Yeah. So that's why you have to learn. You do it faster and better and than any all others. And likely uh, for me, I uh, went uh, first grade is much easier in second grade just for teenager school. But you need to, for now, already be thinking that I'm in university and I'm graduating. Because your grandpa did it. At the age of 20, he started learning alphabet or the beginnings. And then in three years, he was high school graduate. And then he had to take time off to work hard to make a little bit more money. Then he went to university. He got two universities, two PhD or MDs, became double doctor. The, actually, uh, the reason why uh, I don't really know my alphabet is because uh, I'm always stuck on the letter G of like uh, what comes next. So yeah, I think it was the just you. Anyways, uh, back to you. Yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah. When you interview, you speak louder. Okay. Okay. Okay, now I will, I will ask you. So, how much do you know about your father's father? Uh, I mean, I'd say, uh, thanks to this interview, I know a lot more. It's good. Uh, I just thought uh, that, like, uh, so, uh, that he was, uh, like, um, like, uh, you were, and uh, my dad's dad, so, like, uh, so, so I thought like I my dad did tell me uh that he is a doctor, so I did uh know that. He also told me uh, some other stories about it. Uh, so yeah, I kind of do know him better thanks to this interview. Yeah, now you know he worked hard as a child with bleeding hands. Okay. Yeah, and he worked every single hard job, and he got every disease. He even got, got gangrene, something that means that the, the torrential bite him. And for three months, the whole thing is like becoming like a very infected, painful, almost like dying, but he still worked. So, and he was illiterate. He didn't know what kind of diseases he got. But when he became a doctor, he said, after years, I remembered what kind of diseases I got. And I said, oh, my God. If I knew what I got, I would have been dead because I would have been scared. Luckily, I didn't know what kind of diseases I get. But because of the signs, when he studied his doctorate, he would look back. Every medical book he would read about any disease, he would look back. Oh, my God, I got that one. And then another disease, oh, my God, I got that one. And then another disease, oh, God, I got, my, I got that one. So he got every disease that was a killer disease, and he survived. Very Just the beginning of life. Very interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Then he became the doctor of 100 villages. Say free about uh, my uncle's dad. Okay. Uh, so in take two, uh, so we did learn uh, that uh, his, uh, that in uh, your dad's childhood, uh, we learned uh, that his uh, hands got attacked uh, by cacti forms, and uh, also he got all kind of killer diseases, am I right? Correct. As he grew up, and he did all the difficult job mm -hmm. that anyone would have. So a poor child from a small village, father died, became orphan, and he had a family of five, including him, that he had to bring money for. Mm -hmm. he, like, he, was the, he was a baby who was like the father of the house. <laughs> okay, okay. make me laugh. Yeah. Okay. So now, after he did through work through all the hard times, did all the hard work, got all the killer diseases, survived, and then all of a sudden he learned about the new revelation, new dispensation, new era, new world, and then he just got excited. He said, I will make myself change, and I will make the world change. Okay. That's why he became Baha'i, and then he went to the fast through the primary school in six years in one year. Three years in one year, three years in one year, 12 years in three years, and he graduated. Then he became a doctor. Now, how oh, will go to serve the people? So he first thought, I'll go to the most difficult part of the country. He went to the Baluchistan, the south. What's that? That's a region where there is the most like, tribal 
like a camel and horse ride and no civilization, no electricity, no water, very difficult times. And two countries, Iran and Pakistan, at that time, the border was open. It was a whole Baluchistan. He was the only doctor, not just of a hundred, of the entire region of Baluchistan. And he had a big, fast horse that he would go to um, like every kind of like village, township, disease, uh, illness, poor people, uh, rich people, the Khan. He was the only doctor for six years. And that's where your father was born. Okay, uh, so uh, if uh, you, so basically imagine this hand uh, is uh, him and this hand is cactus. So he just like uh, walks towards the cactus and then he just touches it and then he runs off. No, he has to gather the cactus. He has to gather but, thorns. But, but didn't you say running with bleeding hands and Dave too? Didn't yeah. you say that? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, he's bleeding hands because his job is to collect the cacti or the cactus yeah, he was or the. Running with bleeding hands. Yeah, he was running around with bleeding hands because exactly. his it's job, perfect. like if if you're a gardener, you have to collect the roses. He was not a gardener. He was a thorn gatherer. His <laughs> job was ten hours per day. He has to. Around though, eh? Yeah, running around. He had to running around because why? Because the wind would roll the thorns. The thorns are very light. They will run, and he had to run after them. Have to c c collect them. He was a collector of thorns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's who? That's your. Uh, that's dad. Uh, your dad's dad. <laughs> yeah, he's your grandfather. Also known as uh, Uncle Dad. Yeah. And his name was Dr. Vali, or complete name is Dr. Valiullah Kamalabadi. From the village of Kamalabad. He actually is from the village of Kamalabad. I didn't know that there's a village named after uh, our family. It's the other way around. There is a village, and our family is named after that village. Oh. oh. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that it was the other way around. I thought uh, we were named after the village. In the future, yeah, we were named after the village. But in the future, many cities and many streets okay. will be named after your family name because mm -hmm. of your grandfather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my cyber industry is because uh, I'm going to be an engineer or a video gamer. Uh, every street is going to be called Kamabad and Afis, and he's uh, maybe even your name, maybe other people's name do. Yo, wow, you are going to be the promoter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, the mm -hmm. PR, public relations promoter, yeah. and maybe you will be the filmmaker that mm -hmm. will tell the story of many, many good hearted people around the world, mm -hmm. starting with your grandfather. But somebody is making noise down upstairs. Uh, that's downstairs. Yo, no noise, please. Tell them. No noise. <laughs> we are filming for God's no, I didn't sake. Make a noise. Okay, no problem. Okay, now talk to our audience. The audience are so happy to hear you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, despite uh, that I am named uh, after. Uh, somebody well my name well my middle name is uh Badi, which is named after uh, somebody uh despite that I would say that this is pretty interesting uh I mean like you know Badi did somehow get like um Vince force field even though uh they did smash his brain and stuff <laughs> so yeah it, even despite that uh that was a pretty tough job so I like both ideas, uh, so yeah, that, that's pretty cool. That means you will do a great job for the world? Uh, yeah. You mean you are convinced you must help everyone? Yeah, I think I'm going to make uh, even more increased, Simon says. Like, you know, there's only uh, red, uh, yellow, green, and blue. I'm going to make it like much more comfortable, uh, uh, complex than that, <laughs> yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, back to your father's father. Uh -huh. When he became a doctor, first he went to the tough areas for six years. Mm -hmm. In that area, my mother, that means your grandmother, says everywhere were snakes, tarantula. Uh, like there were, snakes and tarantulas. Yeah, and scorpions. And, also I and your them. father, that means their first child was born there. So your father, my brother, was born in a very 
dangerous rural areas of Baluchistan until he was two years old, maybe. Then my father said, okay, for the children's safety, I will still go to villages, but not this tough area. I'll go to the north of Iran, where there is a greenery, there is water, and there is a... Uh, so, but he was asked to go to Belgium or maybe to Latin America outside. He said, no, I want to serve Iran, and I want to serve the village people of Iran, where he had come from, villages. Yeah, so your father is known as the one who served the rural area the most. Maybe in one lifetime he met maybe half a million patients, minimum 200,000 patients. Very interesting. He cured everyone and he's a legend there. If you go, your cousin, mm -hmm. that is my son, Exir, when he was 11 years old, I took him there. And all the villagers came and the children of the children were talking to him for 10 generations. As long as our children's children exist and your children's children exist, we are thankful to you because of your great gra your grandfather. Okay. So you come from a very important, legendary person who has served the people. Mm -hmm. So you must become a very good person in the world. And also, uh, my middle name is uh, also. Badi, uh, very important. Yeah. yeah. Your first name is very important. That is Anis. Your middle name is important. Is Badi. Your family name is important is Kamala Badi. Uh, wow, wow, wow. You said my middle name is Anis and you also said my middle name is Badi. No, your I first name is Anis. Oh, Nafis. <laughs> I made it wrong. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, from my older brother, Iraj Kamala Badi, I have two nephews. And I often mix them. Yeah, he does so, have two nephews. <laughs> first nephew is Anis Kamala Badi. Okay. And can you tell me your name, full name? Look at there. Uh, okay, full name again, I guess. Mm. Okay, my full name is Afis Badi Kamala Badi. That's my full name in Iran. Yeah, very yes. good. So, here is Nafis. Here he is about seven years old now, right? Yeah. He's two yeah. years older than my father, his grandfather, when he started work. Mm -hmm. He was working earlier than you. And he was he's, doing a lot of hard job. He's five. He did that. Yeah, his job was he was a thorn gatherer. Mm -hmm. And he okay. got spiked a bunch of times. Yeah. Okay, and he was the breadwinner of the family of five. The only breadwinner of a family of five when he was five years old. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And he got every killer disease. He did all the difficult work of life. He I was illiterate. My dad uh, is the bread counter of the house since he is like the only one who goes shopping uh, for uh, my favorite foods. Oh, okay. In I your house, like your foods. father is the breadwinner mm -hmm. of the house. Mm -hmm. No, your mother is also breadwinner of the house. She works. But, but she doesn't go shopping. That's a true fact. Okay. But she makes the money mm -hmm. that gives you your school fee and also school takes care fee? of you. Yeah, every. Your school has to, you have to pay money for them. Oh, okay. Nobody works for free, otherwise their family cannot survive. They, the teacher is the breadwinner for their, their family. Okay. Okay, so, now your... You're not the breadwinner. Yeah. Now your father's father, grandfather, already finished university, finished all the hard work, and in fact, his real hard work just started. Being the only doctor of hundred villages in Baluchistan, tough job, and then being the doctor, the only doctor of maybe 50 villages in the north of Iran, in the mountains range near the Caspian Sea. I mean, near not like uh, 10 minutes distance, no, two hours distance. But he was 24 seven. That means all the time he was at the work. To such a point when he wanted to read books, he was playing with us like this, and he was reading his book. And then playing with us like this, one hand was playing, one hand was memorizing book. He, our memory of your grandfather is that he had 3,000 books in a, like a room big like this. He bought every single book that existed, both the domestic Iranian or American or European books that was translated in Persian. Mm -hmm. The books were in medicine, in philosophy, in psychology, in religion, in history, in poetry, 
he would learn them all. Okay, very interesting. He had more knowledge than I have, and your brother, I mean my brother, your father has, he had more knowledge than we all had put together, because he really read books. Actually, kind of, we do have more knowledge, it's because back then uh, there weren't uh, much new things, but now we know about those uh, newer things, so technically we kind of do have more knowledge than... Correct. Than, so, yeah. Yes. This is the miracle of this age. Mm -hmm. Back Every... then, they were not computers, but we know how computers work, so that equals we are much smarter than him in these days. Yes, but you will be surprised if mm -hmm. you sat with him, if you were alive, and you talked to him, you will know that he knew all the knowledge that you think he didn't, that, that was not available. He knew, he, he learned a lot about the future also, about the sciences, about technologies, every area. Mm -hmm. he, was like, he was like the Pac-Man. Thirsty for knowledge, 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 knowledge. He would like gobble every kind of knowledge. Oh, so like, uh, so, uh, are you trying to say that basically the ghosts in Pac-Man are the diseases, uh, and, uh, so, uh, the dots are, uh, medicine and knowledge, and also the power-ups are cures? Yes. Mm -hmm. He saved literally 100,000 people's lives over and over. There are so many legendary stories. Somebody even later ages in the Iran-Iraq war, the guy who became a general, and he told somebody else who were like from our town, that Dr. Kamalabadi brought me to this world. He gave me life. He gave life to so many people. Yeah, they had very, very high respect for him. Even now, if you go to that village and you just don't mention anything, say, I want to know and you, don't, you can ask anyone, 90 year old or 10 years old. You say, I want to know about Dr. Kamalabadi. You know what will happen? Mm -hmm. Everybody will start crying and jumping and asking other people. Everybody will come around you. And if you say, I am his mm, grandson, mm -hmm. wow, they will and be... And then they'll go crazy. Exactly. And we did it a few times. So mm -hmm. oh, I know. And I asked somebody, my friend, Mr. Hamid, mm -hmm who was older, I said, he was in Iran, I said, go to that village and just say the name Dr. Kamal Abadi. And you know what happened? Mm -hmm. So many people said so many good things that this friend Hamid became a Baha'i. He said, if a Baha'i can be so kind to so many people and solve their problem and selflessly like this, I want to be okay. like him. <laughs> okay. So that's why we say the Baha'i has to be known by his action, not by his name. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody says, I am a Baha'i, I am a Baha'i, no meaning, no value. If he acts and does good things and takes care of people and makes sciences, make inventions, and goes to the village areas, helps the people, or makes some uh, philanthropy or good act, or brings wealth to all the poor people of the village or going shopping for me uh, yeah for you food. you are one because you are child you need that but soon you don't need you have to be the source you have to help others they need yes yeah, you know just get that plank and then i'll buy everything else they would they like yeah and then after you get what you like you have to give to other people what they like mm -hmm. that they don't have don't think about me, myself, what I like, what I need. Never. Yeah, I know that. You think about others first. Mm-hmm, I know that. Too. Okay, so then say something. What do you like to say? A message. What uh, you learn? So, basically, I learned uh, that you don't, like, always keep something for yourself. If you just get, like, tired from it and you just want to still keep it, just, like, give it to someone else because that's what you should do if you got... Uh, it's good, and then there's no point of just having that thing if you're not going to use it, and someone else wants it. So give it to that other person if you uh, don't want to use it. Like if you get uh, bored uh, on playing on a phone, uh, and you like uh, it's very laggy, so uh, and they and someone wants to play a different game, and you just like don't want to play anything on there, just give it to like uh, that person. So, yeah. Sometimes even more than that, even if you wanted it, even if you need it. You prefer others. First give them. When they can't use it, then you may take it back. Or you just give it. Don't even think about it. 
So giving and sacrifice means automatic, mm -hmm. without thinking. Giving and don't even thinking that I want it back. Okay. That's called detachment. Okay, uh, very interesting. This word you have to memorize, detachment. That means I am not attached to something. Okay, uh, wait, uh, I'll be right. Okay.